Welcome to our video series on ways to automate your online business. In this video, we'll look at automating your email lists. Okay, first of all, let's start talking through options for managing your email lists. If you run any kind of business, managing an email list is very beneficial. All it simply is, of course, is in return for offering them something of value, for example, a very useful newsletter, a weekly newsletter, let's say, or just offering them some freebies in the first place in return for their name and email address. Basically, you give them value via email, and they're effectively saying yes for you to follow up with them. And of course, you have to stay within the law when managing an email list. And obviously, these laws will continue to change, but effectively, what's defining how you can manage email lists these days are the can spam laws. And often, if you actually use an email service, you'll stay within the law automatically because they make sure they're fully up to date with all that. So, for example, some things you need to keep in mind when managing an email list. It needs to be very easy for people to unsubscribe at any time. You need to have your business address at the bottom of every email sent out. And there are some other further rules as well. But again, if you use a service, then you generally automatically keep within the rules because these services make sure you do because they obviously don't want to get into trouble. So they want to make sure you don't cause them any potential problems. So in turn for giving your customers useful content such as a weekly newsletter via email or by giving them valuable freebies as soon as they give you their email address, they've implicitly given you their permission to follow up until they say no more. And generally, this email list is double opt-in. Some services even go further with triple opt-in, which isn't generally necessary, but some services take it that far. But generally, double opt-in means, let's say, for example, here, subscribe to the Member Speed newsletter. You enter your name and email address, and actually, generally, if you manage any sort of email list, you want to have a comprehensive privacy policy and make it easily accessible. Hardly anyone's going to read it, but it does reassure people. Okay, so name and email address. And then an email gets sent to the address you place here. An email gets sent there saying, Are you sure? Are you really sure? Then click this specific link. And then, if you do click the link, you've double confirmed. You've double opted in. You haven't just entered your details. You've also confirmed your details. Confirmed your subscription. And generally, it's recommended that you always do double opt-in at least. Otherwise, you can have problems, such as having people maliciously typing in other people's emails. Okay, so how do you manage your email list? Obviously, the manual route would be that you collect all the emails and then send them all out using Microsoft Outlook, for example. But that's horribly labor-intensive and not a good way to work at all for legal reasons as well because you need to manage all the unsubscriber requests and all that. So generally, you want to use software or services. I often suggest services over software, but there are some software options. And with software, you of course install it on your website, and that manages most aspects of running your email list. Okay, first of all, a couple of options for email list management software and a very widely used piece of free software which works very well is called Dada Mail. And if you just go to Google and search for Dada Mail and there's the website. Not hugely memorable, but it's mojo.skazat or however you pronounce that, s k a z a t.com. And that's entirely free. Because it is free, there's limited support, so you're effectively on your own. You can pay for support, but obviously at that point it stops being free. So that's an option. 
and email lists of even up to a million emails are managed using this software. So that's one option. One downside of using email software is, obviously, is that you might be slightly more at risk of getting out of date with the email sending laws because the software might not be updated as regularly as a service. With a service, obviously, if they're out of date, their business is pretty much gone. So a service really has to keep the email side of their business fully up to date for all customers. Whereas with software, if you've already purchased their software, perhaps they don't update it for a few months, and then you could potentially get into trouble. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But it's really not a huge risk, to be honest, especially with reputable software. So as you visit websites and pay attention to the software they're using, you may actually see that Dada Mail is used for some very popular email lists. Okay, another option which seems quite popular is AutoResponse Plus. Now, I don't have experience with AutoResponse Plus, so I can't recommend it either way, but it is widely used, so it may be something to look into. As you can see here, they have an online demo. And just as a very quick example, there's a very popular site, it's UK-based, called MoneySavingExpert.com. And a journalist runs this, and he offers tips on how to save money around the home. And he has a very popular free money tips email. This weekly email ensures you don't miss out. He's using Dada Mail, and the last time I checked, it's going out to half a million people, but his website gets so much traffic, it could be nearer a million by now. So, very popular websites and email lists do use the free Dada Mail. But another downside of having email management software is that it puts all the strain on your web server. And what I mean by that is, when someone comes to your website, they actually come to your web server. And a server is just a computer that handles websites. But if your visitor just wants a web page, web pages are easy. A web page is really just text and formatting. But if you want to do something more complicated, like managing email lists on your website, it starts using the processor of the CPU, the brain of the web server, more and more. And if you're sharing the web server with other websites, that can cause problems. It's not a problem, actually, if you have small email lists, but with big email lists, especially email lists of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, it can put a real strain on the web server because it has an awful lot of calculations to do, an awful lot of processing to do. So that's when you might want to move to a dedicated server where you're the only website on the server. But that can make your costs go up considerably, so that's something to bear in mind. Whereas if you're using a service, obviously, you're using their servers, so all the strain of sending out emails is on their web server. So you don't need to worry about that, and it can potentially keep your costs lower. Just some things to think about. Very importantly, though, if you do use email software or services, make sure you do regular backups of your databases. If you're using software, do regular backups of your email databases, so if you do lose any data, you can easily recover without losing your entire email list. And if you're using a service, let's say like a Weber, they do have a backup option within their control panel. So you just download your email list once a day or once a week or whatever you choose so that if something does go wrong, you easily recover. And beyond just email lists, you may be familiar with this, but having autoresponders is very useful functionality. Autoresponders is a function where you write a bunch of emails ahead of time, decide when they're going to go out, and then you don't need to do anything more. For example, let's say this website, Money Saving Expert, you enter your email address and he has some money saving tips already created. So let's say immediately after you enter your email, you get your first tip. Let's say it says, this is how you save money on your electric bill, or 
this is how you get more interest, or these are recommended bank accounts for getting more interest, and so on. And he's already written 30 more emails, and he's timed them so a week later you get email number one, a week later you get email number two, and so on. So he doesn't have to do any work. The work's already been done, and you automatically get email after email after email. So if the content of your email isn't dated, then you can write content way ahead of time, and then you're effectively managing an email list in a completely hands-off way. You don't have to do any further work, and you're following up with your email list with useful content and offers again and again and again. So if you're interested in that, look for autoresponder functionality. The last time I checked, Dada Mail doesn't have autoresponder functionality. I believe just going from the name, Autoresponse Plus does. So generally, with email lists, there are two types of emails you're going to send out. You're going to send out broadcast emails, where you send out email updates to all your subscribers, and autoresponses, where you've already written and set up emails that go out every few days or every week, or whatever you choose. Often, email lists are a combination of those. You have already created emails that go out every week or every few days to keep your email subscribers up to date and so they don't forget about you. And then, when you have a new offer or something you want to promote, you send out an update email for that promotion. Okay, this is a side note, but when managing email lists, it isn't a good idea to fail to keep up to date with your subscribers regularly. Because if you don't send them an email for a month or two, they're going to forget about you. And then, when you do finally get in touch with them, they aren't going to know who you are, and they're not going to be very responsive. So, what you really want to do is try to keep in touch with your email list once a week, at least, or maybe once every couple of weeks at the very least, and always make sure it's providing something useful to them. Because by providing something useful, They've implicitly given you permission to send them offers from time to time, rather than just sending them offer after offer after offer, which is obviously not going to make them very interested in what you have to say. Just as a further example, a very popular email subscription list, Daily Reckoning, it's received by hundreds of thousands if not millions of email subscribers, and they actually send an email out every single weekday with a lot of content. And then, within every email, they also promote offers. The whole angle of their email subscription is that it's an investment email, an investment news email, and they're always very bearish. Essentially, their whole business is that they write emails and news to scare you about what could potentially go wrong with the markets and the economy and so on, and then, the products they promote within those emails are going to help you stay safe from such dangers. So, that's really their model. So, if you receive their email over any period of time, it's constant gloom and doom. It's interesting, but you may want to take it with a grain of salt. But it is a very big publishing company running this, and that model works very well for them, and it's a big publishing business. Okay, so those are a number of options. For myself, I use Aweber for managing my email lists. It's a very good service, very reputable, very proven, and actually very inexpensive, I believe. I just pay around $50 a month to manage my email lists at the present time. The bigger your lists get, the more you pay, but it's negligible, really. So, those are the points to consider for managing your email lists. And just before I round out this video, I should mention, we'll cover this in more detail in a later video, but in the previous video, I briefly touched on services such as MemberSpeed and One Shopping Cart. They're essentially all-in-one services. One Shopping Cart is a shopping cart, it manages your databases, it manages your email lists, so it manages a lot more things than just your email list. 
but it's fully integrated so that all your lists are managed all through one interface. And that's in fact a service. Whereas member speed, you can purchase that as software that runs on your website and that manages your customer database and also manages, it's really an all-in-one solution with CMS, which is Content Management Solution. So it basically manages your entire website if you wanted to, and it also runs your customer database, your email lists, your order pages, everything. It's incredibly versatile and incredibly powerful and actually rather complicated in the beginning because it's so feature rich. The number of features can be a tiny bit overwhelming initially, but if you want software that runs absolutely everything, and really, once you get used to it, it makes your life a huge amount easier. This really is an all-in-one solution, and one of the few very proven all-in-one solutions for running your web pages, your customer database, your email lists, your order pages, absolutely everything. At the moment, you can lease it for $57 a month or own it outright if you want to buy the software, and you can take demos, and there are tons of videos to help you become familiar with it and learn the system very quickly. So this is really an all-in-one solution, but what I'm getting at is that such larger solutions beyond just email management generally also include email management as part of their service or software. So that pretty well rounds out what to keep in mind to automate the email list management of your web business.